I wish to acknowledge the presence of our senator, of course, one of the authors, Senator Lapid, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Francis Tolentino, and Senator Nancy Binay. Okay. This is the uh, Senate hearing of the Co Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform, joined with the Committee on Local Government, Science and Technology, and Finance. Uh, for the for the for Senate Bill uh, 1741 entitled An Act Declaring the City of Davao as the Cacao and Chocolate Capital of the Philippines, introduced by yours truly, and Senate Bill 899, an act creating a cacao research and development center, authorizing the appropriations of funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Introduced by Senator Lapid. Okay. Okay, uh, this is a public hearing held by the Committee on Agriculture and Food and Agrarian Reform and the other committee, uh, Local Government, Science and Technology and Finance. And our agenda is to declare uh, the city Davao as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. Cacao has been part of Philippine history for several hundred years. Only recently has the country been reawakened as a potential origin for high-quality cacao. Malagos chocolate is one of the frontline brands of the Philippines in the international market, uh, uh, which is uh, based in Davao. Launched in 2012, the brand has made a name and earning multiple awards from the Academy of Chocolate International Chocolate Award and Great Days, among other. In 2017, Malagos Chocolate Cacao Bean made it to the list of the best 50 beans in the world under the Cocoa Excellence Program. Another multi-awarded brand is Auro Chocolate, which takes pride for its bean-to-bar process since they have cacao beans that are fully traceable in planting communities in the Philippines. Its commitment to quality has earned it 23 international awards, including the top 20 best cacao beans award, a first for the Philippines in the international cacao awards. The Philippines take pride in the use of high quality local ingredients from the cacao beans of Davao and the sugar of Bacolod molded into perfection. This just shows that the Philippines is among the countries in Asia since to have a competitive advantage on cacao production given its strategic location and climatic condition. The, ca the cacao sector is projected to grow driven primarily by its extensive appeal, popularity, and wise use in food and beverage industry. According to Euromonitor, increased demand for chocolate with perceived health benefits and more exotic flavors is expected in Western Europe and North America, which are the traditional chocolate consuming markets. Notably, Asia is expected to become the second largest consumer market for cacao-based ingredient in the world after Western Europe. The Philippines, the city of Davao in particular, with more than 30 chocolate processors, 
and 6,000 cacao farmers planting 3,475 hectares of land is leading the country to produce quality chocolate that would be competitive worldwide and as a result boost the efficiency of farmers. Moreover, the Philippines and specifically Davao, the region on the island of Mindanao is right in the cacao sweet spot in the middle of the cacao belt. Along with geographic location, there are several critical factors cacao needs to successfully grow. The right climate conditions, which consists of temperature, rainfall, humidity, light and shade, the right soil conditions, and the right topography. Fortunately, the Philippines checks all of those boxes. The island nation is so well situated that it is possible to grow all three major types of cacao variety. Criollo, which is prized for its rarity. Forestero, the backbone of the cacao production around the world. And Trinitario, a hybrid of Criollo and Forestero. This bill that I authored seeks to recognize the city of Davao as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. This measure aims to garner additional support not only to maintain and promote the cacao. Okay na. Buksan mo nga. Nag-e-echo pa. Okay na. Wala na. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we had a problem here. Anyway. This bill that I authored six to recognize. Bukas na ba? Nandito. Mm -hmm. The city of Davao is the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. This measure aims to garner additional government support not only to maintain, promote, and protect the country's cacao industry, but most importantly, to assure its sustainability for the benefit of farmers and other stakeholders. Senate Senator Lapid Senate bill also recognizes the potential of the cacao industry and its support proposes the establishment of a cacao cent research and development center. I wish to inform Senator Lapid that the cacao research and development now is being undertaken at the University of Southern Mindanao in Cabacan, North Cotabato, and the University of the Philippines in Los Baños. But after we pass this bill, we hope to pass another bill, which they are they want to do. It's the Cacao and Coffee Development Fund, maybe, or creating the Cacao and Coffee Development Board. 
but that is another topic. So today, we just want to pass the bill that recognizes uh, the city of Davao as the cacao and the uh, chocolate capital of the Philippines. So I now acknowledge the presence of our resource person. Uh, we have here the under secretary for high value crop of the Department of Agriculture, Yusek Evelyn Lavinia. No, 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 no. Uh, Honorable Ma Mayor Sara Duterte, Mayor of Davao City, represented by OIC City Agriculture Office, uh, Mr. Leo Brian Luterio. And of course, uh, the Regional Executive Director of Region 11, represented by Ms. Ma Mariel Aglibot, Regional High Value Crop development program focal person for region 11. And then Mr. Abel James Monte Agudo, regional executive director of region 13 with uh, Mr. Marco Antonio Morido, Re regional high value crop development program focal person of region 13. Mr. Valentin Turtur, Val Valente Tulotur, Executive Director of the Cacao Industry Development Association of Mindanao, Inc. Uh, Ms. Charital Puentes Pina, Chairperson, Cacao Industry Development Association of Mindanao, Inc. Okay. Uh, the Regional Operations Group of the Department of Trade and Industry, represented by Ms. Maria Teresa B. Magbanlag, uh, Supervising Trade and Industry Development Specialist. Uh, okay, and of course, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Executive Philippi Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries, uh, represented by Deputy Executive Director Juliet Opilena. And uh, Ms. Josefina P. Flores, uh, Sector Head, Policy and Systems, SB Corporation. And uh, uh, Ms. Janine Raquel Sigo, Managing Director of Auro Chocolate and uh, the Bu Bureau of Plant Industry represented by the Chief Crop Research and Production Support Division, Ms. Mary Ann Guerrero and uh, OIC Director of the Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance Service, Ramon C. Yedra. Okay. And uh, no more, this is all. Okay, thank you very much. So we have acknowledged our resource person. So I want now that uh, we ask, uh, <laughs> we start asking questions for our from our resource person. Uh, so can I acknowledge the senators who would want to ask questions? I. Uh, 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 I want to have an additional acknowledgement. Uh, Regional Director of the High Value Crop Development Program of Mr. Hannibal Bayoang of Region 9, uh, Supervising Trade and Industry Development Specialist, Ms. Maria Teresa Mag Magbanlag, uh, Sector Head Strategy, Policy and System, SB Corp, Ms. Josefina Flores, Managing Director, uh, no, I have read her, Chief Crop Research and Production Support Division, Ms. Mary Ann Guerrero. Okay, so uh, can we hear now from our Senator to ask the questions to our resource person? Senator? Madam Chair? Yes, uh, um, uh, Senator Binay? Yes, yes. Madam Chair? Baka meron ho din sa mga resource person na may presentation. Maybe okay. they can proceed first. Okay. Are there a presentation from our resource persons? Uh, yes. I'm under...
Secretary Evelyn Lavinia po of DA, may a presentation po. Okay, uh, Secretary uh, Yusek Lavinia is the head of the high value crop uh, program of the Department of Agriculture. You cannot, you can now go on with your presentation. Okay, uh, may we have the slide please? Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, also the author of Bill 1741, and the other senators, uh, Senator Manuel, La Manuel Lapid, uh, also the author of Senate 899, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Nancy Binay, Francis Tolentino, the representative of Mayor Sara OIC Lyoter. Uh, Leo Luterio, stakeholders, and my colleagues in the Department of Agriculture. Um, on behalf of the Secretary William Dar, let me present to you an overview of the Philippine cacao industry and how Senate Bill Number 1741 and Senate Bill Number 899 will boost the Philippine cacao industry. Cacao is one of the high values, high value crops included. In the enumeration of the high value crops, under Section 85 of RA 7900 for the High Value Crops Development Act of 1995. Pursuant to this law, the High Value Crops Development Program is currently one of the national banner programs of the Department of Agriculture. The program is specifically aimed at, the promote, at promoting the production, processing, marketing, and distribution of the high value crops. This necessarily includes all the programs, projects, and other interventions for the development of the cacao industry, among others. Cacao is also included as one of the priority agricultural commodities in the Philippine Development Plan of 2017-2022. The Philippines is well situated that it is within the growing belt Davao is located at 7%, uh, 7 degrees. Our country located location made it possible to grow all the three major types of the cacao varieties. Uh, pakibalik. Pakibalik. The Criollo, uh, yeah, the Criollo and the Trinitario. The Criollo is a Philippine heirloom variety and prized for its rarity. It's only, it only accounts about 5% of the world production of superior quality. While the Forestero, a variety on the other hand, is the backbone of the cacao production in the world and constitutes 80% of the world's supply. And the Trinitario also, it's hardier, high yield, purple color beans, and it is uh, the bitter taste dito galing, no? which is the polyphenols. 70% uh, and finally the Trinitario variety is a hybrid of both the Criollo and the Forastero. And 70% of the Philippine production is the Trinitario. Cacao is also said to be self-pollinating. So we were saying three to five clones in a hectare. Next, please. We have about nine varieties that is already NSIC registered. So as mentioned earlier, cacao is a high value crops. It cannot be denied, however, that despite being considered as a high value crops and priority commodities, the full potential and growth of the industry are yet to be realized. Despite the limited budget, we at BA have been implementing programs towards the development of the Philippine cacao industry as follows. Following the eight paradigm of Secretary Dar in the new thinking for agriculture is to increase of area production, we provide certified planting materials for expansion. To increase yield and production, we provided farmers with fertilizers, not just for new trees, but to rehabilitate old and unproductive trees as well. We also have the capacity building to capacitate farmers with the update technologies to produce and post-harvest. 
to mechanize cacao farmers and ease and processing, and we have been consistently providing machineries and equipment uh, to continuously improve production and marketing and post-harvest technology. Research is being conducted through the Bureau of Agricultural Research. We do marching, market marching of farmers with buyer to the support of the of DA Agri Business and Marketing Assistance Services. And to align with the new thinking of Secretary Dar, uh, it is the farmers are encouraged to form cooperatives and association to attain the economy of scale, easier marketing, and uh, to do value adding. Uh, we also encourage them to do crop diversification for an add-on income. Next slide, please. The DA has been continuously supporting our cacao farmers to achieve the goal of a competitive and sustainable uh, Philippine cacao industry. To achieve this, the government and the cacao stakeholder came together to craft the Philippine Cacao Industry Roadmap, which was signed on March 7, 2017, which is the 2017 to 2022 Philippine Cacao Industry Roadmap, signed by the president himself, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte and what witnessed by the stakeholders. And the, with, this is with the Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Agriculture. The roadmap provides the harmonized direction and strategies that are sure as a guide in the development and strengthening of the cacao industry. Specifically, the roadmap provided for the development direction and upscaling strategy such as increase in productivity level, expansion of production areas, moving up the cacao industry value chain, strengthening of the market presence through branding and focus in the fine flavor beans market. With this, it is expected supposedly that by year 2022, the original was year 2020, at least 50 metric tons, uh, 50 million cacao trees producing a two kilogram dried beans at equivalent per tree will uh, to be planted. Because at present, uh, we have only 0.5 to 1 kilogram. At least 100,000 metric tons production volume of quality cacao beans is achieved. At least 100 farmers are getting additional income of at least 130,000 per hectare. And additional export earning to at least 250 million would be realized. Next slide, please. Despite the intervention from the government, a number of challenges hampered the growth of the industry. While there has been an increase in area of production, the expected yield and volume of production was, were not realized. There were over 64,000 hectares of land were planted but only 40% was productive and resulting to low farm productivity. Yield was only one kilogram per tree in which we were aiming for two kilograms in the roadmap. This 50% below national, uh, which is below the national target. Nothing less, yield and production are expected to increase. Uh, since the cacao, we have been higher harvest at the third year of each planting. The increase in the area of production can be attributed to the provision of the planting materials by the high value crops of DA, DNR, and PCA. With PCA at present, uh, they have a program now for intercropping of coffee and cacao to add on an income for the cocoa farmers. So this would also increase our production of our cacao. Um, next slide, please. You will see in the chart, Next slide. You will see in the chart that the cacao production from 2016 to 2019 is dominated by the Davao region, consisting of almost 80% of the country's production. Uh, there is a steady increase in the production and it is expected to increase for the upcoming years with the different interventions provided by the government and the private sector. Davao City, next please, has been consistently producing the highest volume of cacao in the entire country, as seen in here. And in 2019, it contributed about 27% of the national share, as seen on the slide. 
Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the cacao production from 2016 to 2019 is dominated by the Davao region consisting of almost 80% uh, backslide, sorry, backslide, please. Almost 80% of the country's production. Nawala yung isang slide. A steady increase in the production and is expected to increase for the upcoming years and the different interventions provided by the government. So sana makikita sana natin yung different region, pero nawala yung isang slide eh. Ah, nakahide. And then, and also, just like production, uh, Davao region has the highest production area, almost having 64% of the total production area. 90% of the following production can be found in Mindanao. Areas with coconut plantation is an ideal production area for cacao, thus giving more options for expansion and also for more income. Davao region registered the highest yield of 0.61, while the Davao had a decline in yield from 2017 to 2019. This may attribute to the newly planted area in the region in which the trees cannot yet achieve the full production potential. Fertilization program of the high value crops will also greatly help in the increase of the yield of the cacao. Of course, if there will be also an increase in budget. Uh, next slide, please. Here. The DA, therefore, is one of the honor uh, with the uh, honorable sponsor of Senate Bill uh, of Senator Villar of 1741, which aims to declare the city of Davao as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. In doing so, the proposed bill, as explained earlier, would not only give recognition to the status of the city as the country's biggest producer of cacao, but it will give honor as well to the hard work of the cacao country's cacao farmers and to their contributions as driver of the rural development. As a matter of fact, on September 7, 2020, DA recognized Davao City as the cacao capital of the Philippines. And let it be in history, uh, Davao, it was Davao stakeholders who started bringing, who is instrumental in bringing cacao to the world, which started in 2010 through the Cacao Industry Development Association of Mindanao. So during that time, uh, we have a, you know, here, DA started in 2010, giving only a seedling of 20,398. Before that, it was really below, below the 20,000. It's less than 10,000, which was being distributed since it was not a priority. So from 2010 to 2011, uh, from 20,398 seedlings that were being given by DA, in 2011, nag-increase ito to 130% increase, no? Because of the clamor of all the stakeholders. And in 2017, we reached more than uh, 9 million that, uh, that year that was being uh, distributed. So marami na ho, no? So it is just right for Davao to be recognized as the capital, uh, chocolate capital of the Philippines. To reiterate and to give everyone a perspective of the Davao cacao, first, Region 11 has the highest production output for the country with 6,704 metric tons or almost 80% of the country's total production. The region also houses 18,985 hectares of land dedicated for the cacao trees. All five regions of the Davao make up the top five cacao producing provinces in the country. On 2019, Davao City and Davao del Norte provided 50% of the total production. As mentioned on September 7, 2020 by Secretary William Dar, named Davao City as the capital of the Philippines, since it continues to, the, to be the top producer of the cacao beans, Davao City produces almost 27% of, of the country's cacao. Proudly, Davao has been recognized as among the world's best, 
with the local brands making waves in the international uh, chocolate competitions and a growing number of Filipino and foreign chocolate makers sourcing their beans from Davao. Since uh, mentioned earlier, Davao has produced a lot, a uh, number of artisans maker, and uh, uh, you will see also on your screen how several cacao and chocolate makers of Davao City made the country proud in the international scene. Our very own Malagos chocolates of the Puentes Fina Farm, the Ario chocolate, MS3 AgriVentures, the Ophilo artisan chocolate are just among the many cacao farmers who produce the finest cacao in the country and which is definitely at par with the international quality. So with the roadmap that we wanted to have a fine chocolate, eh medyo na-achieve na natin, except for yung dami ng ating cacao beans that we needed. Clearly, Davao City deserved to be recognized as the cacao and chocolate uh, cacao in the chocolate uh, center of the Philippines. But uh, global production constraint, uh, next slide please, because of erratic weather conditions, uh, aging cacao trees in the major areas, this is global, uh, social unrest and civil war, pests and diseases, competition with other plantation crops, low farm productivity due to the inadequate production inputs, and lack of access to financing and low investment in post-harvest and processing facilities. Ito yung constraint uh, globally. Uh, but one may ask, while Davao, why, while Davao Cacao has been recognized globally, how are we in the terms of meeting the demand for cacao in the domestic and international market? For years, the government has been providing intervention. We have the 2017 to 2022 Philippine Cacao Industry Roadmap, but still, there are many constraints that hinder the growth of the cacao industry here in the Philippines. With this constraint, however, we at the Department of Agriculture have looked at several opportunities to cushion the impact of this constraint. You will see that there are constraints in terms of input provisions and nursery operations. If there are constraints for input and nursery operations, uh, there's also constraint for cacao production, processing, and exporting. To lessen, if not eliminate this constraint, a whole of government approach must be adopted. There are a lot of opportunities to boost the Philippine cacao industry for the country to just supply the domestic market but the world market as well, and get a chunk of the 103 billion chocolate industry. You will see it on the succeeding slide. Um, and next slide, please. Data from the international trade organizations, uh, look at the export and also the import and the export. No, So the import is combined amount of, the import export combined amount of products such as chocolates and other preparations cacao shells, cacao butter, fat and oil, cacao paste, and cacao powder. Uh, the Philippines is a net importer. With adequate support from the government, the Philippines has a potential to supply even just the local demand as the Philippines is a net importer of the cacao products. So tayo mismo needed it already. When in fact, in 2010, we targeted for 100,000 metric tons, but then, we didn't include there na hindi namin akalain within the local lang pala, marami na tayong uh, mga producers, mga manufacturers of chocolates within us. So as we saw it earlier in the slide, uh, they're already world-class in terms of packaging and even with the taste no, of the fine chocolate. So there is really a very, very big market even for the local. Uh, so, as of the latest available data, in 2015, the Philippines imported 178.8 million worth of cacao products. So, ito lang yung data na kuha namin from the PSA. Oh, by the way, all data were taken from PSA as an official. So, clearly, with the quality of our country's cacao, 
the country has a vast potential in the world market. Decline in the budget allocation can be observed, especially for the planting materials and agricultural equipment. Reason for decline of planting material will be the inability of the accredited nursery to supply the previous numbers before requiring the planting materials because we wanted it to be uh, certified. Uh, the cacao stakeholder really wanted it to start right, so kailangan yung planting material e tama. Uh, reason for the decline is also the presentation of the high-value commodities which needed more budget. Majority of the budget can be found on production support since DA mainly helps cacao farmers improving their ability to increase their harvest and yield. Pero ito ngayon, tinitingnan na totally uh, the whole of the value chain approach. Extension support focuses on trainings of cacao, gap uh, production and uh, updating of farmers with the different post-harvest practices and uh, we will be very very strict uh, if we were doing a lot on the good agriculture practice we will double already our efforts no uh, for the succeeding years provision of machinery and equipment is also vital and component of the program since this will greatly affect the quality of cacao beans produced by the farmers this is already in fact one of the uh eight paradigm for the new thinking of the secretary so we're having a lot of budgets uh, needed for the machine uh, modernization so one one might ask why support cacao uh, cacao farming uh, promotes inclusive growth as 90 percent of production area are small farmer holdings and there are more jobs and livelihood opportunities. It also promotes countryside development, and it is also a contribute to the poverty elevation. A farmer may earn up to 100 to 150,000 uh, per hectare and can, can be harvested every two weeks. Cacao is suitable for intercropping, which assures uh, income augmentation. The cacao industry is a market driven there is a stable domestic and export market demand. The cacao price is less prone to severe fluctuation. And what is uh, so different for the cacao with the other commodities, baliktad siya, no? It doesn't follow the uh, law and demand uh, law, no? Kasi ang cacao, pag marami during the peak season of the cacao harvest, mas mahal siya kesa doon sa since it is a whole year crown a uh, whole year crop may harvest ka during the lean months uh, mura ang bili ng cacao beans so baliktad siya kung sobrang dami na mangustin bagsak yung presyo namin sa Davao even with the rest of the fruits but the cacao is different so it is also a short gestating crop for only 18 months that start na siya mag peak from two years and a half and more and uh, you harvest it the whole year round so you harvest the fruit five to six months when in fact ang isang puno punong puno ng bulaklak kaya lang some will be mahuhulog only about 40 will be left or more no? a, a little bit an estimate of there is also a number of support program from different government agencies uh, PLGU, LGU, DNR, NGP. For DA, we have the high value crops, the PRDP, the PCA, Kaani, DOST, DAR, DTI, Land Bank, Cacao 100. So we all, uh, we all know the potential of the cacao industry. And while there are constraints and challenges that hamper the full growth of the cacao industry, there are nothing less opportunities that will support such growth as such the department of agriculture supports the bill um, uh, 899 as this bill will institutionalize uh, the current program of da on cacao and consequently reach the full marketable potential not just domestically but go globally as well the provision of the senate bill are likewise aligned with the DA uh, current program and projects for cacao, 
to name a few, the DA through our office had been continuously supporting our cacao farmers through the provision of agricultural inputs, provisions, establishment of roasting facilities and drying facilities. Uh, we also conduct a capacity building workshop and market linkages in coordination with the agribusiness uh, uh, which is and marketing assistance services of the Department of Agriculture, which is in charge of marketing. When in fact, uh, during the last Salon de Chocolate, it was the uh, Department of Agriculture through its AMAS who provided for the payment, uh, more or less about 2 million for the booth uh, to be displayed during the, uh, for the best cacao beans. These were all aimed at sustaining the yield and income for the farmers and improve productivity, enhance the capability and skills of the farmers. We are also in the process of developing and institutionalizing the Cacao Excellence Program. Ito na yung ating ano, um, uh, part yung Salon de Chocolate. As mentioned, the Philippine cacao had been competing with the world. Our cacao is the world class. With the support of this proposed law, yung dalawang law, uh, we shall reach the full production potential of the cacao. This will surely increase the farmer's income. As to the specific provision of the bill, while we support the establishment of the research center, we suggest that the cacao centers of excellence be established instead in the major cacao producing region and in areas suitable for cacao production. It shall function, for example, as follows to organize systematic program to improve cacao production, including the development of effective production and post-production system to produce fine cacao. It, uh, it will also serve as cacao farmer resource center for cacao production from farm to market and from bean to bar to include best practices aligned with the world standards in the cacao value and supply chain. It will serve as the product development hub for value added cacao and cacao byproducts as a result of continuous research and development. The center shall also serve as the central site for networking and training and develop capacity building programs and initiatives for cacao farmers and other stakeholders in the cacao value chain, such as other functions stated in Bill Number 899. In addition, we also support the creation of not just an advisory body, but the Philippine Cacao Industry Council for a focused and harmonized implementation of the Philippine Cacao Industry Roadmap and to catalyze provide leadership and proactively engage stakeholder in the promotion and development of champion cacao industry. These are just some of our comments. We will submit our position paper for our other comments, Paul. So the cacao, uh, some of the products, cacao beans, roasted beans, the shell, and then the paste, the butternut, and so on and so forth. So before I end, I would like to recognize also uh, why cacao is also here now. It's not only the Department of Agriculture, but the Department of Trade and Industry who made a, also did a big role. Kaya tayo ay recognize And it's really a good teamwork. Plus, yung grabeng pagkupursige ng mga stakeholder who started it in 2010. And thank you very much for all the senators present. And to the two authors of the two bills, Senator Villar and also Senator Lapid, for the bill that would really put cacao and put a mark, uh, additional mark, no, at ano in the world. Thank you very much, Po. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, si Amy Po. Uh, I just want, uh, Senator Aimi, I just want to acknowledge additional resource person and senator, okay? Uh, we wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Bongo 
And for our resource person, we wish to acknowledge the marketing director, marketing director of Chocolate de San Isidro Inc., Mr. Dante Muiko, President of the Cacao City Marketing Cooperative, Mr. Kenneth Reyes Lau, uh, owner uh, Rosit Cacao Farms, Mr. Grover La Lavador Rosit, and then uh, uh, Executive Director of the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries, Dr. Lisa G. Batad. Regional Director, Rural Agro-Industrial Partnership for Inclusive Development and Growth. Uh, Director Edwin uh, Bankerigo and the owner of Malagos Chocolate, Mr. Rex Fuentes Pina. And of course, the Regional High Value Crop uh, development program, uh, the Region 10, Ms. April Racines. Okay, thank you very much. May I now acknowledge uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Amy, uh, we cannot hear you. Sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, thank you very much to our distinguished author, as well as our uh, chairwoman for agriculture, and, and also Senator Lali, the other author, as well as my colleagues. Um, I, uh, unfortunately, uh, before listening to the other resource persons, I unfortunately have uh, uh, two bills pending in another committee, as well as another finance committee hearing. So I would just like to clarify, unang una, ano yung functions ng CRDC? Kasi alam natin na yung DA meron ng uh, bar at saka may high value crops ni uh, Yusek Levinia. At the same time, DOST also has a Philippine Council for Research in Agriculture, yung PICAN RRD. Tapos, gusto ko rin tanungin, uh, nabanggit, ni, uh, nabanggit doon sa umpisa, sa Powers and Functions of CRDC, yung NEDA. Is NEDA going to be a member of the advisory board? And then also, still to do with the membership, um, itatanong ko lang yung DTI, nabanggit ni Yusek Lavinia, yung key role of uh, DTI in marketing and promoting our Philippine cacao overseas. So isasama rin ba yung DTI? Yun ang itatanong ko sana para i-clarify itong uh, uh, effort natin sa research and propagation ng cacao. But we're fully supportive of this, if only because I'm a certified chocoholic po and uh, would love to uh, see more um, uh, chocolate from the Philippines. Um, also, uh, I am hopeful that uh, the declaration of Davao City per Senator Lapid as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines should uh, not merely be an honorific title, but should have distinguished, should have distinct uh, uh, advantages, such as, for example, is there a mango capital in the Philippines, that being our national fruit? Is there a banana capital in the Philippines or a pineapple capital? Perhaps it is time to focus on these different export uh, quality fruits that we have in the Philippines and ratchet up uh, our agricultural exports. Thank you, Po. Those are the uh, questions I'd like clarified if uh, anyone would uh, be able to answer. Thank you, Po. Uh, Senator Amy Marcos, I want to clarify that this bill, this hearing was made specifically to declare uh, uh, Davao City as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. The DA has declared it, and so I thought that the the, the Senate, or rather the legislature, should declare it formally. That's why we call the hearing, and that uh, that act. Uh, sponsored, the Senate bill sponsored by Senator Lafitte is uh, an addition and I thought that it's not wise that uh, the declaration will come with that act because uh, we have a ruling that it should be single single uh, what do you call this? You, you have single topic bill. So after this I, I intend to hear this uh, 
uh, creation of the cacao and coffee development council and also um i in my past experiences you don't create a council to develop a crop you have to create a development fund a program <laughs> which will be <laughs> implemented right. specifically by different department because you can see in cacao it's not only da who's doing it That's it's right. everybody so we have to assign uh -huh. the work to all those different uh uh institutions like for example cacao is intercropping to coconut and uh in the cocoa bill, cocoa bill that we're going to pass there is a specific budget for intercropping and one of them is cacao so there will be a budget there and so i want to i want the clarification of how the uh high value crop of da will what will they do and what will the uh, coco levy fund do so that we will be clear so there is there is no interlapping of work okay so uh i want to inform everybody that uh the creation of this uh uh research center and this uh you know, should go together in one bill and this hearing is just for the declaration of uh of uh Davao City as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. So we'll do another hearing for that. Okay. Thank you I very see, much. See, okay. Yes, all right. So um uh, in the meantime, Bo, I would just like to push for our traditional in addition to cacao, um yeah. let's also try and revive the flailing uh, banana, pineapple and mango exports. You know, yeah, po. that's why so maybe so maybe we can consider that in the next hearing. In the meantime, yes. we extend our full support to the declaration of Davao City as the cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines, clearly uh, being the most committed and the most qualified. Thank you, Paul. Maraming salamat, uh, uh, Senator Aimi. Uh, in fact, one of the questions I will ask the high value crop, what are the leading high value crops in the Philippines? So we will have knowledge. Kasi ang dami daming high value club, crop, but dapat alam natin yung the first six man lang. Oo, para we can, uh, we, yun naman ang magandang policy na you concentrate on the bigger ones para yes. mabigyan ng more opportunities yung bigger ones. And I think you're right that it's mango, it's, uh, banana, and pineapple. pineapple. And maybe and, we'll choose the first six. So, and then so. I was also going to say that uh, the export potential of each is very important. And yes. I'd like to posit that, uh, in fact, the only uh, exported uh, vegetable uh, is being planted in Ilocos Norte, the shallots po. You Yung lasuna. So, uh, yung purple onions na talagang ginagamit yeah. sa uh, uh, Southeast Asian and Italian cooking. So, we should focus on these export uh, quality crops that we have and we support the effort of our chairwoman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to acknowledge any uh, resource person who will like to make a presentation or any senator who would want to ask Madam questions. Chair, Chair, yes. Uh, Senator Francis. Yes, okay. yes. I, I am in full support of the twin bills, uh, especially the move to make Davao City a cacao capital. Uh, I think specifically it refers to Barangay Talandang, uh, and, and they, uh, they endeavor to have more than a thousand hectares. I've been saying this modestly aside, Madam Chair, since 2016, when Malaysia launched their uh, uh, first chocolate product without having a single cacao plant. And um, I would like to ask our resource persons uh, just two questions probably uh, to help expedite this uh, discussion. Uh, so yung... please acknowledge whom do you want to ask kasi there are many resource kahit, persons kahit here. Po, ilan Maybe po, that. Ilan po talaga yung nakakarating sa ibang bansa na produktong cacao ng Pilipinas na hindi natin alam? Kasi kanina ang diniscuss nyo, uh, mag import tayo ng mga beans. Uh, no. Hindi rin, hindi rin napag-usapan. Eh, may tax yan. Uh, dapat mm -hmm. siguro, i-propose nyo rin na bawasan man lang yung tax for the next five years o kahit walang tax muna habang nag import tayo ng mga quality beans sa ibang bansa. Pangalawa, yung unang, yung, ito na nga yung unang tanong ko, ilan po yung pailalim na 
uh, cacao products natin na galing sa Mindanao, nakakarating ng Malaysia o Indonesia na hindi natin alam. Kasi ang alam ko, galing, galing sa atin din, eh, sa Cotabato, North Cotabato, yung ilang produktong cacao na nakakarating sa Malaysia. May, may records po ba kayo? Yan lang po. Madam Chair, and I'm in uh, I will ask the high value crop to answer that, but first of all, I want to make a manifestation that uh, the total demand of cacao in the Philippines is 50,000 metric tons. And as presented by the high value crop, they only produce 8,400 metric tons. So maybe uh, ang, ang ano is to round it off 8,500 metric tons. So we are producing only eight and a half percent or rather six seventeen percent of our cacao demand in the philippines we are importing uh uh 17 minus uh 33 30 uh rather 73 percent of our cacao demand we are not uh producing enough for the philippines and if ever we are exporting because they are in demand but really our production is not even enough yeah. to yeah. cover our local demand we are importing our uh our, our chocolate from other countries that's why uh it's so it's so sad that although and you they said that uh 80 percent comes from the davao region and 10 percent 80 percent from the whole of mindanao so uh, 10% lang ang Visayas and Luzon. So it's really pathetic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's why you asked the question from the uh, high value crop yeah. program yeah. ng DA. Yusek uh, yeah. Labinia. Yusek, okay. meron din kaming konting kakao sa Alfonso Cavite, mga ginagawang tableya. At meron din oh, din yeah, but very small okay. relative to the, whole, to the whole thing. Kasi ang buong Luzon and Visayas, kung 90% ang Mindanao, 10% lang tayo. Oh. You, yes. said, yeah, you can answer. But again, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm in full support of that when Ms. Uh, yes. is saying this since 2016. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Okay. You said, Lavinia. Sir, uh, we don't have that data exactly, but may we request uh, the Department of Trade in Industry po? For Val, do you have the data on that? I'm sorry. Yeah. Off. Yeah, it's for export. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can you make it a little louder? Hey, sorry, sorry. Hey, sorry, sorry. It's uh, uh, Mr. Tortur. He is from the private sector. How come the private sector knows and the government doesn't know? <laughs> So we have the we only have the data of us as for the net importer from 2015 only, which is young chocolates, uh, which is about a total from chocolate, chocolate bean, cho cocoa butter, and cacao butter of about one, 21 million one hundred two uh, in US. And then yun yung yung export, and then our import is more or less. 178 million po. as of 2015 that's the latest data that we can have that we have uh, of the chocolates cacao beans and cacao butter and cacao powder cacao paste and the other miscellaneous so, so, you, so you confirm na madam uh, madam chair uh, kino confirm ni you sec lavinia na kahit papano meron tayong konting export how can we export uh, what is your export uh, secretary lavinia what did you say 21 uh, 21,000 uh, metric ton, million, uh, what is million? In US po. In US dollars. In US dollars po. That's no, not no, US. in amount, in amount. Why, yes. why, the quantity, we're talking of quantity. Uh, wala ho akong quantity kasi iba-ibang produkto to, ma'am. Uh, we'll but check. how will we know what percentage of our production we're exporting? We're not talking of the amount, we're talking of the quantity. You should know that. You have been there uh, since 2016, you don't know the quantity we are exporting and the quantity we are importing. So, sandali lang ho, we'll just get it. Kasi hindi ko memorize, ma'am. Sandali lang po. Bigyan mo sa amin yan. 
Kasi pag amount, we will know what quantity is that. We, you give us the quantity in, in, uh, ano, in, uh, how do you measure uh, metric tons, di ba? We, we are, our demand is 50,000 metric tons, isn't it? And we produce 8.5 thousand metric tons. So that is about 17%, di ba? of our demand so we are importing if if you follow this we are importing uh, 73 or rather uh, uh, 50,000 uh, 20 percent is 84 the young hundred fifty thousand minus 84 85 the and five uh 43.5 percent metric thousand metric tons 43,500 metric tons yun ang import natin di ba kung ang production natin ay eh, eh, uh, 8,489 metric tons now uh dun sa 8,489 metric tons you are exporting some of them, but uh, I think that's very little kasi <laughs> ang liit-liit lang ng production natin eh. Diba? It's, How can we export so much? It's so nil po na it's negligible. So we talk on this basis. Uh, 50,000 metric tons and local demand and then 8,500 ang thousand ang, ano, ang production. So we import 43,500 metric tons. Is is this correct uh, from the other resource person? This is the figure. Yes, Madam, Madam This Chair. is correct. Oh. This is Paul Tortor. Yes, as uh, Mr. Tortor. Yes. Can you make your you can you make your you can make it louder because we cannot hear you. Yeah. Make it louder because we cannot yeah, hear. Uh, yeah. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. It's better. It's better. Okay. 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 Uh, actually, that's uh, true. That uh, the the total requirement for Philippines cacao and cocoa preparation is fifty thousand metric tons. And according and to PSA, our uh, production. Uh, total production right now is to something like 8,500 metric tons. But based on industry estimate, actually we are we are already something like 11,000 metric tons. So metric tons in a year. So that's why still we are short of uh, around 40,000 metric tons. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Uh, ko lang yung sinabi ni Jose Karina. Paano tayo naka-export ng kahit maliit na porsyento? Baka merong hindi na na-cover ng, uh, ng ng datos nila. Baka merong uh, naglalabas po na hindi natin alam. I think the export would be the, the award-winning chocolates from Davao. But uh, because we have a brand, uh, we're winning in Paris and in other places in Europe. That's why we have a demand for our product. But I think that's a uh, little value lang yun. Hindi, hindi malaki. Kasi wala naman tayo masyadong i-export kasi maliit lang ang production natin. We're just producing 17% of our local demand, di ba? 17%. Oo. And the rest are imported. So maybe they have export in Davao the the processed chocolate because they are winning awards so they are in demand. But in the context of the whole production, that's um, small. I don't know, Mr. Tudor, can you say how much is that in terms of metric tons the export? Actually, that's true. Uh, it's uh, just a small, small. Uh, how amount. small? How small? Yeah, too small. And we can identify, uh, I know uh, Malagos Garden is exporting chocolates, Oro Chocolates is exporting also. But that's a very small amount. What we are exporting right now is actually the dried beans, the fermented beans. So this is something like 3,000 metric tons every yes. year. So the raw materials, Madam Chair, sinasabi niya. Uh, raw. That's, that's I think we have here uh, Mrs. Puentispina and uh, Ms. Kerigo. 
we can also answer how, how big is okay. the how small is their export of the chocolate products. Okay, can we hear Europe? from Ms. Ms. Mrs. Puentes Fina and Ms. Uh, the owner of uh, what is the other one, Auro? Okay. Can we go? Can we go? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Mrs. Puentes Fina. Yeah, yes. I have been to your farm eh, in Davao. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. First, I should say I'm very happy with this occasion that the Senate has saw or heard of the industry to be developed. And it has a very, very promising uh, industry. And the first, I'll go to the, if I may, about the bill of uh, declaring Davao City as the chocolate capital of the Philippines and, uh, or I should say cacao and chocolate capital of the Philippines. I would like to suggest that Davao City is chocolate capital, but cacao capital of the Philippines should be the whole six regions of Davao. Uh, six Davao. provinces of region 11. Yes, the six. Uh because definitely uh, cacao uh, processors in Davao also source their uh, beans, fermented beans from these other provinces or regions. Uh -huh. And uh, so I would like to uh, suggest that. So about the question now of whether we have all of these exports of the beans and the, pro and the processed chocolate yes definitely as uh, we have uh, been to these different international uh, trades they have been asking for our fermented beans and unfortunately we don't have the quantity to come up with uh, this uh, big importers to consolidate for their markets meaning uh, a European consolidator have been asking for the beans and for them to distribute to the rest of Europe and so also with the US, United States of America consolidator asking for this quantity and for them to distribute their, their small artisanal uh, uh, chocolate makers because of you should of course, no, that shipping to these far places would be in big uh, volumes. And uh, we cannot be shipping small volumes to this far place where you oh, need about see, 40, and, uh, yeah, 40 days to do. So it. definitely, I, was, um, it. I am not aware of the export of the beans. But what I know is our semi-processed uh, chocolates, maybe in the first stage, maybe, maybe in Tablea, has to have inroads to these markets. And they are not big volumes. They, we have just started on the bigger volumes because a lot have been convinced about our heirloom produced uh, beans, and they have been uh, especially mentioned during the Chocoa 2020 in Amsterdam, where they uh, certainly recognized these heirloom varieties, and this is what they would like to have. I think looking at the previous uh, questions of our Senator Francis Tolentino, maybe our uh, statistics or the who calls for looks at what we have been exporting and what we are producing i think there should be more study on that where they get the figures whether they get it from the bureau of customs or whether they i don't know where to get those statistics that would be needed to really have a good picture of our industry so i think there is really this need to take a look at this industry that's been recognized to have very, very, very good potentials. 
and I hope this bill will be able to help us on that. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm satisfied with the answer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes. got ready the uh, the uh, no, data from PSA on our imports of co cocoa beans, and it's too uh, than our export. Though uh, our cacao beans for our importation is only 754.3 metric tons, with 105 million 507 in terms of finances. Can you repeat that? We cannot understand, uh, uh, Secretary. Uh, the under you said, Labinia. You Can you repeat what yes. you said? We have more. What, is, the Im what is your import? Our import po of the beans itself is 754.3 metric tons lang po. Maliit siya ang ating import. So, so yung so, malaking, yeah, yes po, ang malaking ini-import natin are already mga chocolate so ready-made na. The powder, the cacao powder, uh, cocoa powder, and also uh, the chocolate. Yun yung malakayan na ating mga importation. Pero yung beans on natin, malito yung ating ini-import na cacao beans from other countries. Okay. You Opo. make a report to the committee on this importation, what is their classification, so that we can balance. Because we're looking for 43,500 metric tons. So I want to know in what form are we importing the 43,500 metric tons of cacao? Or in what form? So you make a... Ano, so that we will tally. Kasi ang produ local production natin is 8,500 metric tons. So we are importing 43,500 metric tons. So I want a tally, whether it's in the form of uh, process or uh, cacao bean or so, but it should equal, di ba? Para maliwanag tayo. Okay, can you submit that? Uh, oh, Ma'am, we will submit. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, can I add something? Uh, yes. Way back to uh, since uh, Ma'am Charita Pantispina is here also. So in the start of 2010 or 2011, they were one of the first to export by uh, to uh, to the U.S. Tatlo yeah. sila. Uh, toto ko. Yeah, but, 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 but there's no figure. So you have to find the figure because you are government. You're supposed to do that not the private sector they're saying that they don't know how much how what is the volume so you have to find out what is the volume of export oh so nalaman natin sabi ni ni mr tutor na nag-export sila ng 3,000 metric tons of cacao beans tapos nag-export naman sila uh Mrs. Puentes Pinat, the others, nang yung process na. So we want to know, just like your import, you have to divide it between cacao beans and process. You have to divide also your export ng cacao beans and process. But we have to tally the figure because it's not tally. <laughs> okay? So you tally the figure so you will know if uh, your figures are correct because if they don't tally, there's something wrong. Diba? As of uh, 2017, po, our export for cacao beans is 3,094, uh, 3, while in 2018, bumaba po, so 2.7 na lang. Yeah, yeah. So that's the assumption. But what is the process, cacao? Oh, so we will know how much it, if this of this 8,500, and if this is wrong, how much is really the production? Kasi ang sabi ni Mr. Turtur, 11,000 daw, hindi 8,500. Because from your figure, it's 8,500. So my um, figure before, <laughs> it's round up, but sabi sa akin, we produce 20% of our cacao demand. And if this is 20% 20 of 50,000, 50, that's... 10,000. That's my figure. But you said in your presentation, it's 8,500. So there must be something wrong in between. So we just tally. It's your work to tally. We're, we're just listening to reports. Okay. Yes. So you will give me a report. What is your, the local production, how it is exported and, and how is it used? 
and then the import how is it imported in processed goods or in cocoa beans so it it should tally diba? yes to the total okay yeah. so I, mean, I am asking you to make a report okay yes so don't comment anymore unless you make mistake you make a report you study and make a report because it's not tallying okay do you understand uh DA, uh, yeah. Yusek, Labinia, okay? Okay, sige. What else? Uh, any under comments from the senators? Uh, questions? If there are not any more questions, I want only to ask this question. You don't have to answer it today. You give me the report. What are the leading high value crops in the Philippines? That's what Senator Aimi is asking. What are the leading? Maybe the first six. Uh, the substantial high value crops in the Philippines. Okay, uh, please make that report. What is the budget for the high value crop program of DA? Okay, I want the total budget. You indicate that in the report. How much budget for cacao from the high value crop budget? Okay, considering that you're from Mindanao, from Davao City, uh, you should have uh, given a budget for high value crop what is the budget of cacao in the high value crop program of da okay and uh, uh and what uh, what do you do with your budget uh you don't have to answer it now you just make a report to me because anyway we're we're uh we we are uh going to hear your budget anyway from the department of agriculture so these are the things i want to know so that i will have an understanding of what is your program for cacao in that high value crop program so if there are any more questions uh senator nancy do you have a question senator nancy Apo. Ah, wala na. Maybe yeah. sa budget na lang daw, tatanong okay. na lang yung for the oh. budget because I think very so, important yun. Okay. So, with that, Ay, uh, merong mga Madam private Chair? check. Yes, yes. Yes. Siguro, yes. the one question na lang, ilang co-ops na ba ho yung na-create for cacao? Uh, uh, do you have an answer, Secretary Lavinia? And you, Sec Lavinia? Do you have an answer? Ay, uh, ang ang naandito ngayon iise eh, yung nag-attend. Uh, merong isang co-op dito eh na nag-attend. Maybe they know. Uh, uh, ang naandito na co-op is uh, ang bayo. Merong co-op dito na nag uh, the one who attended here in behalf of the co-op is uh, Cacao City Marketing Cooperative. Uh, Cacao City Marketing Cooperative, Ms. Mr. Kenneth Reyes Lau. Where is Mr. Lau? Maybe he will have an idea or uh, of the cacao cooperatives in the Philippines. Wala, wala siya. Na-acknowledge siya. Anyway, we... Yes, 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 Mr. Mr. Tortor, yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Uh, we have more than 30 uh, cacao-based cooperatives in the country right now, actively uh, so... uh, propagating cacao or processing chocolate. Can you, make, can you submit a list? Can you submit a list to us of those sure, 30 sure. co-ops? Sure, we have a list, Kasi yes. doon sa ano... Doon sa Coco Levy Bill na ipinasa namin, mamimigay sila ng equipment. And the first priority would be the co-op. Pag walang co-op sa bayan, then it will go to LGU. So we have identified 68 uh, 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 coconut producing provinces in the Philippines. And lahat kay ang cacao is intercropping to coconut. So kung uh, kasali doon sa mga equipment na ipamimigay would be processing equipment and it will be directed to the co-op. Pag wala lang co-op at saka ibibigay sa LGU but uh, pri priority will be the co-op. So please uh, please uh, 
give me a list of uh, chocolate uh, cacao co-op in the Philippines. And so with uh, Yusek Lavinia, give me a list of all the co-ops of the uh, high-value crops in the Philippines. Kasi kasama din dun sa intercropping sa coconut ang coffee. coffee. Okay. So we have about 180 for cacao co-ops uh, that are being supported by the Department of Agriculture. Oh, kami 30 lang. Yun lang accredited sa kanila ang 30. 180 ka. Again, uh, she she said, said 30. 30. Sabi mo 180. So. Uh, 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 this is the one uh, accredited uh, which is supported by the Department of Agriculture po. Kakao lang tong 180? Kakao, well, uh, ano kasi yung iba ho kasi, hindi lang kakao yung tanim nila. But kaya have... nga, kaya nga. So kanya sabi niya, tatlong po yung kakao producing co-op. Ikaw, 180, I think lahat ng high value crop co-op. So hindi lang kakao. Kasi may coffee pa, may banana pa, may ano pa, di ba? You just give me a list. Oo. And describe what crop. Is is that co-op producing, ha? Huh? Uh, Mr. Turtur, you give me the cacao co-op. Mr. Turtur, give ma me yes, a list of the cacao co-op. And Yusek Labinia will give me a list of all the high-value crop co-op in the Philippines, ha? Huh? And then you tell me this co-op is producing like that, like that. Hindi, hindi lahat. I ibigay mo sa akin yung crop nila para magagamit natin kasi may mga batas kami na pinasa to help this co-op so we will know who what what law will help them okay uh you say clavinia did you understand me yes yes you give me a report okay any more questions Opo. yes madam chair siguro last na lang kasi dun sa presentation kanina ni you say clavinia parang sinabi niya yung research Research and marketing, parang um, it was done by DA. Eh, to avoid yung overlapping, kasi alam naman ho natin, uh, Madam Chair, di ba, pagdating sa marketing, ang yan talaga yung core ng trabaho ng DEI. Ah, yes, pagdating yes. naman sa research, yun naman ang trabaho ng BOST, research pati yes, dun sa yes. mechanization. So, uh -oh. meron ba kayong convergence with the two other agencies para hindi nasasayang yung pondo na baka nag-overlap na yung trabaho nyo? May convergence sila but informal, di ba? May convergence sila pero informal. Yes, Mr. DTI. Uh... Yes. Can you comment? You, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Ah, magandang umaga po, ma'am. Ah, yung convergence po natin is through the Philippine National Cacao Council, which is being chaired by the DA and co-chaired by the private sector. Nandun yung DTI, nandun yung DUST, and yeah. other partner agencies. So doon pinag-uusapan, Dahil doon sa roadmap, we have six strategy and bawat strategy, nandoon yung mga activities which we are going to undertake. So, napapag-usapan. So, and, and, it, and, in the, in, and at, the, at the regional level, we have also 15. We have also 15 regional cacao council. So, nag-uusap din doon at the regional level and pinag-uusapan din at the national level. Para at least... Ang approach kasi natin, ma'am, is uh, value chain based. So, ibig sabihin, uh, in the intergamot that is from nursery up to marketing, nag-uusap kung uh, ano yung mga activities na i-implement. So, uh, can you make a report on that so that we will consider that in the future? You will make a report on those council that you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So we will, uh, ano, kasi ang problem natin, ang daming council, ang daming meeting, ang daming program, pero in the end, bagsak pa rin yung production. <laughs> so it's not working. <laughs> oh, kasi nung ako eh, unang mag-hear nitong cacao, when I read about cacao in 2016, it's 10,000 metric tons out of the 50,000 are being produced in the Philippines. Ngayon, parang ganun pa rin. So we are not, after how many years? Four years? We are not improving. So maybe there's something wrong with the system. Baka puro meeting, puro ganun, pero wala talagang actual program. So uh, you just submit to me what you are doing, 
and then I know so I can read all of them and then make make a strategy on how we will do it in the future. Okay. Are there any more comments? Yes. Madam Chair, siguro for submission na lang ho, can we get a copy of the roadmap for cacao? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we will ask you, Sec uh, Labinia, to submit what, is that the roadmap, what you, uh, no, you yes. reported? Okay. Send so you give uh, all the senators a copy of that, oo, para magbasa uli sila. Kasi minsan, pag binasa mo dito sa Zoom, nalilimutan mo eh. You have to review, Okay. Please give all the senators a copy of your roadmap. And then the, the reports I ask you to do, please submit it to me so that uh, uh, if there are any more comments, we will... Uh, yeah. Senator, I have a comment, suggestion. Yes, yes. Request. We have been, yes. Uh, my company has made some study regarding the cacao um, industry. And yes. May we, may we send you some yeah, yeah, yeah. All the reports are welcome. All the reports are welcome because we will uh, read all of them so that when we make a law later on, we will know all the considerations. Oh. Yeah, we have a, study. I will, it, will uh, share it with you. Yes, yes. Apparently, Please submit it to me. Oh. Yes, because apparently, as you have said, we have not improved for the last maybe six years or more. Yes, yes, the yes. The demand is already there. We really need it very much. Yes, yes. The market is there. We cannot afford to lose it when we yes. make promises to our customers or our buyers yes. that we yes. cannot supply them. Yeah. We're very, very happy. We're going to send you some uh, yes. suggestions, yes. the study yes. that we have done. Yes, because that's my problem. When I started as chairman of the Committee on Agriculture, that is the figure. 50,000 ang local demand, ang production natin 10,000. Then after, sabi mo nga, six years, ito pa rin ang figure. So there must be something wrong with what we're doing. It's not working because we are not increasing production. That's why uh, I want all those reports. So I will read and I will know what what to recommend in the bill that we are going to pass about uh we'll, we'll put coffee and cacao together uh oh para ano para uh ma, ma di, malaman natin kung ano kasi hindi naman tayo pwedeng gagawa ng ng isang bill for coffee isang bill for cacao maybe, maybe we can do it together so maybe. another one who wants to make a manifestation is Sir Dante Muiko of Chocolate San Isidro. Uh, where is Dante? Yes, yes. Hi, Madam please. Chair. Yes. <clears throat> Magandang umaga po. Thank you for giving me the floor. And uh, I would just like to uh, give some inputs lang on, uh, on the different uh, uh, requirements of your office. Uh, uh -huh. First of all po, yung... Uh, yung pong question kasi nung at, uh, at yung bottom line ho na gusto ho namin na makita lang po din is that uh, uh, we can go back to the bottom line targets of the industry. So, yeah, uh, yeah. so many years ago, we have uh, a target of around 100,000 metric tons <laughs> and maybe we can, and I would agree with uh, Senator Vinay that we revisit the, the roadmap. Yes, and siguro yes. ho, pwede ho siguro natin ma-review ma yung mga cacao dispersal programs natin for the past yes, yeah. years. Yeah, uh, yeah. What, what strategies work and what did not work? So, and then, uh, and lastly, uh, dun po sa R&D natin, uh, kung pwede ho natin ma-lay down talaga yung uh, relationship between the private sector, the public sector, and also the the academic institutions and build a, a, a totally uh, parang uh, an efficient system yeah. uh, such that uh, it's not only us eh, because uh, we can yes. get uh, we can do link ups with the uh, international bodies or r and centers who have been there and uh, who can help us in this endeavor po. so yeah, yeah. Po. maraming salamat so, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Uh, another one is, uh, uh, wala naman siya dito eh. Uh, would uh, Senator Bongo, would you want to make a manifestation? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, uh, Madam Chair, good morning. Uh, short manifestation lang po. Uh, good day, Madam Chair and uh, fellow colleagues. Uh, Madam umaga rin po sa lahat, mga taga-dabaw itong nakikita ko dito sa... sa, yes. sa you know. This is about Davao. <laughs> Sarito, Pintespina. Kumusta yung mga ano mo dyan, Keso, ma'am? Oo, oh, maganda Pada umaga, Senator. Padalaan mo si Madam Chair, masarap yung keso dyan. Yung... <laughs> yeah. Diyan rin si Ma'am Nancy. Ma'am, ay me, oh. Bigyan mo lang keso. Masarap yung keso ng Puente Spina. Yung mga tagalano pa po yun. Ch chocolate mo muna, kakaw one topic eh. <laughs> Oo, Palagos chocolate. Hindi, <laughs> <laughs> masarap yung keso ng uh, Puente Spina. Uh, nag uh, pinapadala yan dito sa sa Manila. Puro mga taga yung iba rito taga City Agriculture pa na nakikita ko sa screen. Anyway, morning po sa inyong lahat. Uh, I'm here to express my support for the two bills which are on the agenda for today's hearing. I laud the distinguished Madam Chair for hearing the said bills which are vital to the Philippine uh, cacao industry. The government estimated that the global demand for cacao will reach up to 5 million metric tons this year our country's uh, local supply is around 15,000 metric tons while our consumption is 50,000 metric tons annually thus uh, it's an uh, opportune time for our country to enhance the cacao industry as there is an increase in the global uh, demand for cacao further we should uh, take advantage of this rise for it will help generate jobs for our unemployed countrymen. Madam Chair, as a Dabawenyo, I'm very proud that uh, under your proposed measure, Davao City will be declared as the cacao and uh, chocolate uh, capital of the Philippines. Nauna po ang Davao City when it comes to cacao production sa buong Davao region with uh, 2,289 metric tons produced last year. Dahil po yan sa ating mga masisipag na cacao farmers, Nagpunta rin po si Secretary William Dar, kamakailan lang po, at i-recognize ang Davao City as the cacao capital of the Philippines dahil ang top producer ng cacao. Uh, Davao region's combined cacao production comprises 78.96% of the country's total production of 8,488.60 metric tons last year. Hindi lang po sa production ng cacao ng unang Davao City, marami rin pong nakamit na awards ng ating mga cacao producers from Davao mula sa iba't ibang award-giving bodies sa buong mundo. Highly sought po ang uh, chocolate makers from, highly sought after ang ng uh, chocolate makers from the US, Japan, and Europe ang ating mga cacao beans. Madam Chair, I am uh, beaming with pride over this uh, Accolades uh, received by our very own Filipino farmers. Nakaka-proud maging Dabawenyo at Pilipino. Magandar maganda rin po ang panukalang batas na lagda ni Senator Lapid. The creation of a uh, Cacao Research and Development Center will be very helpful in educating and uh, training our farmers. It will also further help create and strengthen linkages with international organizations and other cacao development centers in other countries. With this uh, specialized center for cacao research, and development, magkakaroon po ng isang ahensya na nakatutok sa concerns ng mga farmers natin sa cacao industry. At maalala ko po, uh, nung mayor pa si Mayor Dut uh, Pangulong Duterte, ay eh, pupunta po siya sa bu bukid no? At para na namimigay rin po ng mga para magtanim sila ng uh, cacao. Panahon pa yon ng uh, DA Undersecretary pa yung uh, ating Secretary ng uh, Tourism na si Secretary uh, Berna. So, parati ko na pong naririnig ang uh, cacao industry sa Davao at full support po ang ating uh, uh, mahal na Pangulo dito. For these reasons, uh, I fully support the proposed measures which will, uh, for the benefit of our uh, cacao industry, makapagbigay po ito ng tulong sa ating mga farmers at mapaunlad nito ang ating booming na cacao industry. Pangarap ko na maging one of the top producers of quality cacao ang Pilipinas, we should take uh, advantage of the fact that the global demand of, for cacao is increasing annually. It is an uh, underserved uh, commodity. I urge the Department of Agriculture to make good on its promise to produce uh, 100,000 metric tons of cacao by 2022, which will position the Philippines as a regional key player in the cacao industry. Finally, I express my intent to be a co-author uh, of the proposed uh, bills. 
Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Senator Bongo, and uh, we accept all your uh, uh, suggestions and also we will make you co-author of the bill. So, wala na ba bong magtatanong? Uh, uh, this is what I want to do. I will uh, adjourn the consideration of Senate bill that will make cacao uh, that will make uh, uh, the, 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 the yes, yes. Meron yes. ba tayong guests from the OST? Uh, meron ba? Meron ba? Is there anyone from the OST? Anyway, we will have another hearing for the cacao development. I will just adjourn the uh, the consideration of the bill that makes uh, Davao City the cacao, the cacao chocolate capital of the Philippines. And then uh, we will schedule another hearing for the bill of uh, Senator Lapi that we will make a cacao development uh, uh, program. Oh, oh, oh. That is another bill because that will entail a lot of uh, studies and a lot of consultation. So we will make the bill uh, very applicable kasi ang problema natin pag gumawa tayo ng bill na hindi maayos, eh, hindi naman nag increase ang production. So we have to make a bill that will really see to it na yung demand for cacao na 50,000 metric tons ay eh, mamit ng ating local producer para hindi na tayo mag import And at the same time, we can share in the booming chocolate industry in the world, the cacao industry in the world, and maybe we can export. So we want to make a, a plan that is more, uh, uh, that will increase the production of cacao in the Philippines. But in the meantime, I will adjourn the consideration of Davao City being a the cacao capital of the Philippines. And then I will call another hearing for the different topic of uh, making a cacao development plan that is more effective so that we can increase the cacao production in the Philippines. Will that be all right with you? Okay. So thank you very much for coming yes. today. And we hope to see you again when we discuss again uh, cacao in our development uh, uh, bill that we will do in the future. Marami po salamat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pa.